This is Jason Porter with the Red Hat Developers Program here with Eric Chabelle. How you doing, Eric? Very good, man. Nice Very to good. see you again. Yeah, it's good. It's been a while. It's been a while. So what, what are you working on today? Today. Or uh, not, not necessarily <laughs> today, but just in general. Yeah. I know in the past you've done a lot of BRMS stuff. Yeah. Um, my role within Red Hat has uh, changed a little bit. I spent uh, about four years doing the, the, the middleware stuff, evangelizing uh, a lot of the BRMS and the BPM product line. Um, I've now moved uh, across the fence, so to speak, into the platform space and the cloud space, and we now look at complete full stack demos. So across virtualization, uh, open stack platform, uh, everything resting on the, the OpenShift container platform. Very nice. That, yeah. That's all running on OpenShift. All of it, yeah. Is, it, is that a demo that people can go and download can, and try out? You can go over and check it out at the, the stand right over there, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. great, yeah. great. What, what about after after Summit? So after Summit, um, I'm going to do a session here in your booth in just a second to show how to install the OpenShift uh, container platform in about three to four minutes on this Wi-Fi. Excellent. Um, this is all available online on the Red Hat Demo Central. It's a GitHub organization. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in there you can play with on top of the cloud. All for free. Oh, great! As Even free. better. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. nice. Now what uh, what what is it that developers need to know about the the full stack running on OpenShift? Um, if they would like to take a look and Google around a little bit, I wrote an article that uh, gained quite a bit of traction. That starts with uh, my transition into this role uh, as an app dev guy. Um, in the past, you're pretty much not interested in what's going on in the stack, sure. right? I really yep. don't care. I don't want to know. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm writing an application. I, I want to focus exactly. on the app. I don't care about underneath. Exactly. And everything we do at Red Hat in the developer space is trying to foster that as much as possible, of course. You want to focus on what you're doing. That's what containers are bringing to the market. You know, it's, it's focusing on what you're doing, containerize it, and hand it off or move it along down the chain. Um, you used to do that with your middleware applications, and the problem was the first you know, dump of an yep. error uh, confuses everybody but the guy that wrote it. So, yeah. you know, that's kind of the stuff you want to put into a container. So if the container doesn't work, you can hand the container back and do your thing. So my focus is to be, has been to bring this stuff over. And when you look at the stack, you can't ignore the stack anymore. You have to understand a little bit about what's going on in the clouds, what the differences are, what containers do, what this means. And how, how deep do I need to get into understanding the stack? Do I, do I need to go all the way down to the OS level or the hardware level or with, because obviously OpenShift is going to abstract away some, some of those details from you, right? Uh, how, how deep do I need to go? Well, when, when, I, when I say something like this, it's taking the amount of time to step back and look at an architecture in your organization and understand what virtualization means, understanding what programmable infrastructure means, understanding what going to the cloud means. All this ties together into the hybrid cloud story of Red Hat, right? And, you cannot ignore that. Of course, you have containers at your daily job right in front of your nose. Right. But when you're deploying these on one platform to another platform to another platform, it's kind of a good idea to understand what is going on in those environments. There's no need to completely ignore that anymore. You can't just say, not my problem. Right. right? And, right. and it's, it's bringing a lot more interesting stuff, I think, to our developer roles. Uh, the tooling is basically rising up. Because when you're putting a container together, that is what used to be the hardware machine in the data center. Yeah, let's no, be that's honest. very true. Yeah. Let's be honest, right? So some of the tools around that kind of stuff that are kind of handy for your debugging include operational kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's much more localized. We do everything we can to keep that stuff either in the cloud for you or locally just on your machine, you know, tied into your IDEs and tied into different management things. But uh, one of the workshops I'm giving this week at the, the Boston Jug is uh, uh, going to be showcasing uh, playing as a lead developer, setting up a demo environment that includes six containerized services, uh, some of our products, all the stuff on OpenShift Container Platform, and it only takes about a half hour. Oh, very nice. You know, very so good. It's, it's very much a realistic experience of putting together a development environment for your team. Excellent. So. Uh, you, you mentioned hybrid, hy hybrid cloud. What is, or how difficult is it for uh, some, something I have on OpenShift to talk to maybe a, a data center that, that I've got where we have some other uh, some other applications or some other data. Uh, in what way? I don't understand what you um, Talk to a data say, center? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's say I've got, uh, my, my main application is deployed out on OpenShift, yeah. right? But I've got an extra data store that for whatever reason they want behind a VPN. How, how easy is it for my application to talk to uh, something behind a, a firewall or a VPN? That kind of depends upon how you're architecting your, your environment, right? I mean, it's not a, I don't really see the, the, the clear answer you're looking for. You know what I mean? Okay. You know, it's a little bit of a tricky one there. 
I, um, I guess a lot of that, uh, like you said, it all depends on the, uh, it really does depend, the architecture yeah. and yeah. everything else that, that plays into it. I mean, are you tying this together with service communication? Is it uh, headless? Is it microservices? Is it, you know, how are you bridging these environments? What are, what are you doing exactly? Okay. Uh, all questions to answer during the, the architecture phase. Yeah, and, and a little bit of that also can be encompassed in something that we put in the cloud suite where uh, we talk about uh, managing a highly scalable uh, application deployments. So with your containers, okay, you think I have a container, I, I, once I get that up and loaded into my environment, it's just a copy to create more of them. But you also have to manage this across a, a worldwide scale. We have a couple of customers, uh, well, one in Europe, for example, that's uh, uh, pretty well showcased in a lot of the slides I use. There's a financial institute that has three data centers around the world, and you have to put policies and, and things in place through things like cloud forms, uh, using Ansible, uh -huh. uh, being able to script some of this stuff to trigger things, to watch for, let's take Germany for example, where you're not allowed to export privacy information. So if you're using government apps and things like that, they have to run in country. Right. So you can say Amazon, that's nice, or you can say Google, that's nice. Right. They want but to spread I, I it all over run the it world. Somewhere else, right? They don't want to localize. So you have a policy now that this app, this container, this deployment needs to be localized to this region. So okay. it has, for example, just one option, one data center. Uh, another demo I talked to about uh, uh, this is uh, when you're migrating and, and dealing with an, uh, uh, three data centers, for example, one is certified hardware. And some of my applications require certified hardware. Uh, one of our customers is, uh, is an Amazon-like thing in the Netherlands uh, uh -huh. that uh, runs only on certified hardware. You right. will not get support if you're not running on the correct JBoss. That, that becomes Apple. very difficult in yeah. a, a public cloud environment, yes. but yes. Le less so in, in a hybrid cloud. Yes, yeah. so you can have your own private section where you say, okay, this needs to run these apps. You might have something along the lines where the persistence uh, storage stuff that you roll out needs to be close enough to get the speed performance you need to look up data. Uh, the caching needs to be closer, right? Okay, so, yeah. Things like that. Oh, very good, very good. And one, one last question for you. Um, what, what would you say is the, the number one thing that developers need to know or understand about OpenShift? Get started today. The sooner the better. Uh, I've been on it since we acquired the company, uh, before it was even OpenShift. If you have not gotten involved with this container platform, you are missing a whole lot of fun. You know, it's, 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 it's the future. It takes so much pain away. <laughs> it's right. not even funny. Very good. Um, it's, you can run it locally, you can run it in the cloud, you can experience it online. There's just, it ties into all the developer tooling you're used to, especially the middleware guys. Um, there's just really no excuse not to be doing it. You know, who wants to mess around with configuring stuff on your local machine anymore? Very good. You know what I mean? Yep. And we, we just released uh, OpenShift.io. You can go check that out and sign up. It is a, uh, it's open to the public, although it's uh, available based on resources. Yeah, right? they're gonna, they haven't opened it up yet. They're collecting the names and they're gonna invite you. Right, so, so if, if you're not on that list already, go check out openshift.io and uh, take a look at that. Thanks, Eric. You're very welcome. Thank you, sir.